Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition, or the SVD, and how you can approximate a matrix X by a low rank matrix approximation, which is the product of U times sigma times V transpose. More importantly, you can take this SVD and you can truncate it at some desired rank R, which is much less than the dimensions of the original data matrix X. And oftentimes, depending on the data, uh, these low rank representations, this truncated SVD, still does a good job of approximating the original data matrix. But this begs the question, how do you choose the truncation value R um, for this SVD on a case-by-case -case basis? Okay, so mathematically we discussed the Gavish donahoe optimal hard threshold paper that discusses how you can determine an optimal rank truncation assuming that your data is contaminated by Gaussian white noise. And so today I'm going to uh, code this up in MATLAB and we're going to analyze how this actually works and how to actually use their code. Uh, I will point out that they put their code up online uh, in a MATLAB file and so I'm going to be using uh, a piece of their code that computes kind of the hard part of this optimal threshold and we're going to wrap our code around that. Okay, good. So again, as I always want to point out, when you're developing a mathematical technique or you're testing an algorithm, it's good to test it out on a case where you know the answer first before applying it to real data where you don't know the answer, okay? And so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook up a data matrix X, which is exactly a low rank matrix. We're gonna add Gaussian white noise and we're gonna see how the Gavish Donahoe criterion works in identifying the true low rank subspace, okay? And so in particular, what we're gonna do is we're going to have an X matrix that is composed of two columns times two rows. So it's definitely gonna be a rank two matrix. There will be exactly two linearly de uh, independent rows and columns. And then I'm gonna add a bunch of Gaussian white noise uh, onto that, that matrix. And we're gonna see what the Gavish Donahoe criterion tells us should be the ideal rank when we know that the ideal rank should be two, R equals two. So let's make it obvious that the actual rank of the system is R equals two in this case. Okay, good. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook up these, uh, these true U modes uh, and true V modes. Maybe this is a rank, yeah, I think this is a rank two matrix, exactly. There's a cosine, a decaying cosine, and a sine, uh, a decaying sine, and a cosine. And I have two singular values, uh, sigma one and sigma two are two and 0.5. And so I'm going to build my matrix, my matrix uh, by just multiplying them, and I'm going to plot the, plot the matrix. Okay, so this is the true clean data matrix. Uh, it has rank two, uh, and we cooked it up. This is before adding noise. Okay, so you can see that there's kind of this nice uh, pattern of sines and cosines, and there's kind of this uh, like exponential Gaussian looking bump in the middle. Um, yeah, it's an exponential of minus t squared, so it's a Gaussian. Okay, so I have a Gaussian envelope uh, multiplying the sine and, and cosine. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add white noise, this rand n matrix, a whole nother matrix. I'm going to add that to my data matrix, and we're going to have our noisy data. Okay, so this is the data that we see, that our algorithm is going to see. We know the answer because we, we cooked up the data to have a rank two structure, but this is the data that we're actually going to feed into the Gavish Donahoe uh, uh, al algorithm to see what the rank should be given this noisy data. Okay, and it's really quite simple uh, to compute this. So the first thing we do is we compute uh, the SVD of our noisy data. Okay, and we get some singular value distribution. We will uh, essentially determine the hard threshold tau. Remember, we're going we're gonna to truncate all singular values j, uh, sigma j, that are less than tau get set equal to zero. So that's how we're going to determine the rank of what we truncate and throw away is any sigmas less than this, this threshold tau, which I'm calling cutoff here in line 25. And this is using the, the simplest, most standard uh, formulation in the Gavish Donahoe paper. It's 4 over the square root of 3 times the square root of our square matrix dimension n times the known amount of noise sigma. So if you know the amount of noise, you can compute this threshold. Now what I'm doing is I'm finding the rank r is basically the number of elements of sigma that are larger than the cutoff. That's the rank I keep. 
And then my clean, my denoised matrix is just going to be the first r columns of u, the first r by r of sigma, and the first r columns of v multiplied together. So we're going to identify, remember the picture is that we have some singular values with some noise, and we're going to figure out what the noise distribution would have been and only keep the singular values that are larger than that noise distribution. That's what uh, is in this, this clean matrix here. And so if I run that, this is what the Gavish Donahoe optimal cleaned matrix looks like. And you can tell that it's actually way, you know, it's pretty good. It's way better than this noisy data. It actually does a really good job of capturing the basic features of the clean data. Uh, and just for contrast, I also thought it would be nice um, to show if we decided to truncate naively just to keep the first 90% uh, of the variance of the data, so we want to keep R. This is what people used to do, is often you'd, you'd pick R so that you capture 90 or 95 or 99 percent of the variance of your data. So here we're going to devise this R90 threshold so that we pick all of them that are uh, that capture 90 percent of the energy. And I'm going to show you what that filtered data looks like. And you can see that if you go based on this naive energy criterion of just trying to capture 90% of the variance of this noisy data, you actually do a really poor job of denoising because uh, most of those singular values are below the noise threshold. So the optimal threshold, uh, Gavish Donahoe threshold, is really the right way, at least in this case where we have uh, white noise added to a, a low rank matrix, of optimally cleaning this, this data matrix. And they actually prove that this is as good of a low rank uh, approximation as you can get that will faithfully represent the, the clean denoise data. Okay, good. And then just to show what the singular values look like in this case, so here are a couple of plots I find interesting. So here we're looking at the singular value uh, spectrum and a zoom in and then the cumulative energy. So let me just make these a little bit bigger. So what we see here is the actual SVD, um, the, the singular value distribution of the noisy data matrix X. And you can see that I'm, I'm zooming in here to just the first few singular values. So the, the blue dashed line is essentially the threshold that's determined by the Gavish Donahoe criterion. And only the blue circles are the two modes that are captured that are above that noise floor. So here in the zoom in, you can see that there's only exactly two modes that are above the noise floor and everything else uh, gets discarded by this truncation. And you can tell actually that the remainder of this singular value plot actually looks like the SVD of a noise distribution. And that's really the, the idea going on behind this, this uh, optimal hard threshold. And then over here, you can actually see the, uh, the total energy, the cumulative energy plot also versus the modes. And you can see that the first two uh, singular values that are kept by Gavish Donahoe ha actually have a tiny, tiny amount of the energy of the data matrix because there's so much noise on top of that. And so if you only go based on energetics and you keep 90% of the, of the energy, you're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of noise modes and you're not doing a good job of filtering. Okay, good. So that shows that this algorithm works in a case where we absolutely know the answer, where it definitely should work because that's the case that they have provable uh, optimality. But what I think is really cool about this, uh, this truncation criterion is that it even works in cases where the data is not characterized that nicely by low rank structure plus white noise. So we're gonna go back to our eigenfaces example. So we're gonna load all faces. We're gonna compute the SVD of that. It's probably gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna get that started. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to plot the singular value distribution we're going to look at where the Gavish Donahoe hard threshold is, how many modes would be kept or not. And then we're going to look at eigenfaces that are, let's say that um, we're going to look at eigenfaces that are clearly in the low rank part of the matrix, the, the clean part, that's right on the borderline of the Gavish Donahoe truncation, and an eigenface that is way below uh, Gavish Donahoe. And we're going to see if this criterion actually does a good job of separating this data matrix uh, into information that you want to keep and information that you want to discard. Okay, so I'm just going to run all of this code. It's a pretty big code. Um, it's going to compute uh, 
We've computed the SVD. Again, in this case, we don't know what the noise singular, uh, the noise magnitude is. So you have to use the more complicated formulation where you compute the aspect ratio of beta and you compute the threshold using their formula from their paper. This is optimal SVHD coefficient is from uh, the original Gavish Donahoe paper. So you can download that and use it. And let's see what we have here. Okay, good. So here we have the singular value distribution. Uh, this is just the SVD of our eigenfaces matrix. And in the yellow line, what you can see is the Gavish Donahoe uh, optimal hard threshold. And what I'm showing in these three red dots, those are gonna be eigenfaces that are above at and below this threshold. So we're gonna plot those and we're gonna look at what they, you know, what these faces look like. And hopefully this will do a good job of actually segmenting out the data. So I wanna just bring this up. Okay, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, I hope you can see this. And this is our singular value distribution. Okay, so this is an eigenface that's clearly above the Gavish Donahoe threshold. So this is the first red dot, and there's clearly uh, eigenface structure in there. This is definitely a good, uh, a good mode that's informative. And I'm gonna zoom into these a little bit so you can see a little bit better. This is a mode that is right, right on that borderline of being truncated. So this one uh, is just at the border of truncation. And this one is in the noise floor, at least according to this Gavish Donahoe criterion. And so what I think is really amazing is that this face, the first red dot has clear structure. The second face, which is right, right on this borderline, you can faintly see there is kind of the mask of eyes, nose, and mouth in this, but it's really on the borderline. And then if you go below the Scavish Donahoe threshold, what you see is essentially just white noise, maybe with the very faintest uh, hint of a face in there. And so even though this, this matrix does not have any of the kind of criteria necessarily that went into this mathematical proof of optimality, the Gavish Donahoe criteria actually still does a pretty excellent job of telling you where to chop off your data to get actual structure and to throw away the noise. Okay, thank you.